happens. Okay, so I'm going to choose sine x or e to the x as my dv. Now, in this case here, it's hard to decide which is the harder one. So you can just take a guess and see if it works. Um, in the end, for a problem like this, this one actually doesn't matter which one we choose as our dv function. Okay, so I'm going to let you equal sine x and then my dv equals e to the x dx. Okay, so I end up with b is equal to e to the x and du is going to be equal to cosine x. Okay, so setting up my new integral. So this is going to be equal to, I'm going to write it like this, equal to uh, uv, so e to the x sine x, okay, plus, uh, sorry, minus v du, so minus e to the x cosine x, we've got dx here, times dx. Okay, so there's our new integral. Um, this is a bit of a problem here uh, because really I haven't gotten anywhere. Right? I start with sine e to the x and I end up with uh, cosine e to the x. Well, that's not particularly useful. Um, well, let's try it again. So we're going to try it one more time. So let's, we're going to do, okay, and again, since I'm doing it repeatedly, I just have to make sure I keep track of all my stuff. Minus, and I'm going to apply my thing here. So I'm going to apply it to that. And so this is going to be, I'm going to let u equal to cos x this time. And then my dv is going to be the same, e to the x dx. My du is equal to negative sine x dx. Okay, and my v is going to be e to the x. And so when I apply my, my integral here, my integration by parts formula here, I'm going to end up with e to the x cos x. Okay, well that's fine. So it's going to be minus, uh, it's going to be du is negative, so it's going to be plus. Okay, so I'm going to end up with the integral of e to the x v du is going to be sine x dx. Okay, so there it is. I'm just going to move this over a little bit so I can have a little bit more room to work. Okay, so there it is. There's my sine x. This is my new integral. Again, I haven't gotten anywhere. This is exactly the same as what I started with. So I've just gone in one big circle. This seems like a complete waste of time. However, this is actually ideal because if we can generate the exact same expression here and here we can now do some algebra to this because if I write this in so I'm just going to write this in on this side of it remember this is an equation this is just an equality okay so I get e to the x sine x dx is equal to that okay well I have this expression the same here and here. In fact, this is a negative one. So I can actually group these together and just say that I have two of those expressions. This I can just treat this as like a, for example. This is a, this is a, negative a. So I actually have two a's on the left-hand side of the equation. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rearrange this so that I have two e to the x sine x dx is on this side. And on this side, I'm going to be left with e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x. And if this is really true, then I pretty much solve for the, my original integral. I want to know what that is. Well, I can say that this original integral is equal to this divided by 2. So this is my solution. This is going to be equal to e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x all over 2. And don't forget the plus c because we've, we've found an indefinite integral. So there it is. So this is one where if we end up 
back where we started. That's not all necessarily a bad thing because we can actually algebraically treat that as an algebraic piece. And again, here I treated that as an A, and here I treated that as a negative A, and was able to group them together to make a 2A on this side. Okay, and that allows me to then solve for that A value, which is the original integral which I wanted to solve for in the first place.